Spain, Spain, what a beautiful country. That's the Sacred Familia Church right behind me. Of course, I was here with my lovely wife uh, 20 years ago. So we took a picture in front of the uh, front gate uh, where it was a sign that said that it's gonna be finished in 20 years. And now here we are 20 years later and uh, unfortunately it's not finished. The government bureaucracy does not work as fast as we want. Standing here in front of Magellan's house and uh, it's Sabrosa, Portugal. So, you know, uh, Ferdinand Magellan was one of the first explorers. I remember reading his memoirs and so on when I was a teenager many years ago. And, you know, the kinds of explorers, seeing the world, travel around really in the early times it was a really fascinating tale. Time for a little bit of sailing. I'm here in Algarve, Portugal. I've been uh, traveling for the past couple of weeks. I came to this part of the world first a couple of weeks ago to attend a family wedding in uh, Barcelona. Beautiful, vibrant city, young city, and I uh, went to a very nice uh, family wedding, had a great time, and then had to come here to Portugal for a quick business, had to go up to Porto and uh, did a little business meeting, and then I got a chance to visit some of the uh, Douro Valley uh, wineries and vineyards, and nice little taste of the Porto wine. And um, then from there, I took the train to come down to Lisbon, and uh, Lisbon's another bigger city, lots of uh, exciting stuff going on, great dining and so on. And then from there, we uh, decided to come down here to Algarve, and Algarve is a nice little area in the southern part of Portugal, in which you have all of these little tiny small towns near the beach and beautiful and we're staying here in Algarve at a nice little area and had a chance to go out and visit some of the sea caves in the area. You can see one of those little big stones in the background here on our beach, on our hotel beach. And uh, I had a chance to edit the video of a patient that I had just seen before traveling and I wanted to share that with you because it's an interesting case. The patient came in for a follow-up, it was about a five-month follow-up and uh, it kind of brings up a little discussion point about patency. So let's take a quick look at this video. Okay, I want to talk to you about this lower first molar was referred for either surgery or revision to our office. The tooth said was gone therapy a while ago, and you can see it has a large lesion associated with the mesial roots that seem to be short of the apex and a small one with the distal roots. Now the crown is, that's present has a fairly good quality and the CBCT does show uh, there is a lesion associated largely with the mesial root. 
and a small one with a distal root. There, there is infravular nerve that passes underneath there. It's not closed, so surgery is certainly an option for a tooth like this. But since the apex appears to be short, then I usually like to attempt to do a non-surgical revision first before we move on to surgery, where you can see all four canals have been treated and a post is present. And since the post is not all too difficult in a case like this, I decided that I'm going to try to do a non-surgical revision first through the crown where I access, and you can see we have the post right on the distal and the two mesial roots with the gutta percha. So I'm using the total vac here to remove the solution that, I, that I'm constantly using when I'm using ultrasonics, which is why you always have to use a wet ultrasonic tips in order to remove these posts to not only not generate excessive heat, but also help expedite the removal process. So here I've already removed the posts and now I'm drying up and removing all water uh, from the area so I can have good visualization and also provide a dry feel so I can use the endosequence orifice open, which is a 2008 tip, but, but it's austenetic. And this technique that I've described before, it's something that I do only, and I, but I would not necessarily recommend it because it's a very advanced technique because it's a 40,000 RPM rotation on the endosequence orifice opener. So you have to be very careful where you have very limited contact with the gutta percha as it melts it. So once we've cured a little well with this technique, then the uh, key is to make sure we dry and remove all water from the area because we're going to be using a hydrophobic substance such as chloroform or a solvent. And chloroform is the best solvent for this particular application where we add it, create in the well, we wait a few seconds for it to start to dissolve. And then I'm using a 40 and 30 and a sequence 04. These are austenitic files so they can cut very efficiently. And I'm using them in a very light manner, just grabbing a little bit of gutta percha, removing it and using my endo swipe to remove that gutta percha from the tip and then add more solvent and chloroform. Again, at this point, we have to use no uh, water solution. So once we've gone to about two thirds of the length, then I'm going to switch to 1706 and 1704 into sequence scouts. And these are, have more flexibility so I can get further down. So at this point, I've already reached the end of the preparation, but that last bit of the end where it seemed to have been short of the root end seemed to be blocked. I used the stiff files uh, with 06 and smaller files, but I was not able to gain any further length or gain any patency in this case. So I was a little disappointed that I couldn't gain patency, but I managed to fit about 2506 cones in all of these using the ESR CM files. Uh, that's the expediter on that technique. And you can see here that it is the cones are actually fitted still short. So I proceed to remove the cones and start to add Triton and then activate it using my ultrasonic. And this is the passive ultrasonic uh, irrigation and uh, it does as you can see with Triton specifically you get a nice little foaming action that helps uh, expedite the catalytic mechanisms of Triton which is hypochlorite 4 percent and all of the surfactants and then I use the mode 3 of total vac which uses the um, uh, the dispensing tip with the uh, the manifold adding hypochlorite on top and here I'm using Triton again and you can run a large volume of Triton safely through a tooth by using this technique. And you can see here at the end, we've left with fairly clean access and canals, at least judging from what we can see up on top. So I proceed to dry the canals with paper points here. And this little technique is you, you place the paper points and then you dry them and you remove them, you get a little impression of the uh, of the canals and add the BCC La high flow to it and use my a clean file to push it down. And now we're cementing each cone at a time and you can see that I'm, I want to introduce to you this new hydraulic concentration that I've developed and it's not out in the market yet but hopefully it will be at some point. It's a patented tip that what it does is it allows you uh, by having better access since you're working right at the orifice to melt the gutta percha, condense it and remove the uh, handle all at the same time and uh, it, it does help to uh, expedite the hydraulic condensation technique which we developed at Rural Dendo and now this is just kind of a nice little addition to help uh, create that process a lot, uh, make that process a lot more streamlined. You can see here we just place it at the orifice, uh, activate, condense and remove the handle and now what we have is these four canals so quickly and rapidly we're now using hydraulic condensation with these with the hydraulic condensation tip where filled and just using the ultrasonic and water now allows me to remove any of the sealer that's in the canal dry it out 
and this is what we have. I always like to come back after I've used the ultrasonic and water and just kind of just condense down to, uh, at the seams of the gutta percha to make sure that I haven't washed out any of the sealer and that does help um, in my opinion at least to create a little bit of a better seal at the very end. So then come back and add the BC liner blue so that uh, I can't uh, get away without the use of cotton and cabin especially in these cases that I want to have the patient back just in a little while just to see make sure everything is healing well um, before restoration. I use the BC liner blue and that, that, that could be used later as a base. And here is the uh, pre-op and immediate post-op of the case shows that it does, it has filled, uh, we filled the, the roots and all the canals. However, we still haven't reached the apex, nor do we have patency. But what's interesting is five months later in the recall appointment, you can see that the areas have healed just only five months later. And this is without patency. And it's an interesting case that I want to discuss with you. Okay, as you saw, this is a case in which uh, patency was not obtained, and yet we ended up having very good healing. A patient was asymptomatic when I saw him for his five-month recall uh, just a few weeks ago. So how does this happen, and why is it that, according to some people, patency is super important in order to get healing, but yet we see cases like this, so this is not an anecdotal case, there's plenty of cases like this uh, that do occur with uh, fills that are substantially shorter than this, and you end up getting healing. So how can this happen? And it clearly goes to show that there is more to our endodontic healing that is just patency and radiographic look of cases, because this case would be, by many people's standards, a little bit shorter than ideal, and yet we ended up having very good healing. So it has to do probably with a mechanism by which the biofilm is deactivated and destroyed, probably not just purely by the mechanical action of the files, which is, as I've mentioned in previous videos, very important, but in this particular case, probably by the chemical reaction of the irrigants and disinfectants, which if you end up agitating, activating, and using sodium hypochlorate at a good enough concentration, it is through chemical diffusion, Brownian motion, and the kinetic activity of the sodium hypochlorate oxidizing action on um, you know, different uh, biofilms of bacteria in the area could kill beyond the reach of our files. So that has been essentially the theory that we've always held, and yet we've always believed about filling to the apex and RT. And of course, part of that argument has always been because of the fact that it's a predictable, reproducible point for many people by using the radiograph. But the biological component of this is a little bit different. So I'd be curious to hear your opinion on this. If you could comment below for me as to why do you think cases like this would heal and if there's any other mechanisms that you can think of that could lead to successful outcomes in these types of cases in which we're filled short and whether patency is important or not. We saw in the debate between Dr. Ricucci and Dr. Uh, Buchanan at the AAE meeting uh, a few couple months ago in in uh, Chicago that this was an important topic and there are people on both sides of this fence in terms of whether you are going to have to have patency in order to get good healing or not. Of course, Dr. Buchanan is on the side of patency and Dr. Ricucci is more on a more conservative side of staying inside the canal. Now, I have had training on both uh, kinds of uh, techniques uh, with having gone to both the Northwestern University for the no patency technique and then having gone to Harvard University, Harvard Tunnel, tunnel Program, and a program in which patency had been encouraged. So I believe that there is more than one way to do these things. And so uh, it's important to kind of more uh, better understand the principles rather than stick to radiographic looks and outcomes. Anyway, so I hope this case was helpful for you and brings up a discussion, which I hope to participate with you guys in the comments below this video. And um, that's it from Algarve Beach. I hope you guys get a chance to come down and visit Portugal. Uh, it's a beautiful country. The food is great and the wine is wonderful. All right, I think that's it for uh, Rio Dendo. Until next video, I'm Alan Nisse. I'll let's save some tea.